Well, hi there, grade nines. Uh, here's a video on some algebra terminology. So let's start off with uh, this thing that we call 3x squared. And that's how you would say it to somebody, 3x squared. And what it really means is 3 times x squared. Well, what is this x? Well, that's what algebra is all about. The idea is x is an unknown number, yet a big overlying principle when it comes to algebra is uh, doing math when you don't even necessarily know what the number is. And that's a strange thing, that's a weird thing, uh, but that's what algebra is all about. That's what makes it so you know, mysterious and fun and strange. Anyhow, let's get, through some, uh, let's get through some labels here. So 3x squared is what's called a term, and we'll, uh, we'll show that in just a moment. But each term is made up of two parts. The first part is called the number part. So 3 is the number part. Then there's also a variable part. x squared is the variable part. So just to uh, put a couple of labels on here, every term has a number part and a variable part. Now the variable part, you'll notice, has both a base and an exponent. Much like uh, our previous discussion on powers where we had bases and exponents, x squared is a power. It has a base of x and an exponent of 2. And like I said, the whole thing together, a, a, uh, a number part with a variable part is called a term. That's a very, 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 oh, how can I stress this, very important word when it comes to algebra is what is a term? So here are some examples of some different kinds of terms. So let's start off with this one, 4a cubed. Now remember, terms have number parts and variable parts. So what's the number part? You better have said 4. What's the variable part? a cubed. That seems simple enough. And a lot of terms look like that. There's a clear number part and a clear variable part. But not always. So here's the next term, negative 5f. The number part? OK. Simple enough, negative 5, gotcha. The variable part, well, it's f, but that might seem strange because I just got done telling you that uh, variable parts have a base and an exponent. So you might be looking at this going, well, where's the exponent? Do you know how to handle this? Do you know where the exponent is? Well, much like our discussion on powers, you can make any base turn into a power simply by putting it to the exponent 1. So negative 5f to the exponent 1 is the same as negative 5f. Now we see our number part. Now we see our variable part. Next one. Y. Y is also an example of a term. It's supposed to have a number part, and that seems to be missing or at least invisible at the moment, and it has a variable part. Well, we know what's going on with the variable part. It's like saying y to the exponent 1. No problem there. But the number part seems to be absent. Well, in the cases of that, we can simply put a 1 right there. So in other words, 1y to the exponent 1 is the same as y, proving it's a term. And the final last tricky little thing is just the number 6. Now, notice I said the number 6 and not the term 6. But when we're talking algebra, we refer to these individual things as terms. So terms have number parts and variable parts. OK, number part, no problem. The variable part is, seems to be completely missing. And that might seem like uh, you know, that you know, 6 is no longer a term, but it certainly is. And here's the proof. So backing up to powers. Here's what I remember. I remember that any base to the exponent 0 is equal to, I'll wait for you until you tell me. OK, I'll pretend that you told me that the answer was 1. So any base to the exponent of 0 is equal to 1. How do we use that fact right now? Well, 6 is the same as 6 times 1. So right now, this is supposed to be saying 6 times 1. OK, fine. But instead of putting a 1 there, I'm going to put x to the exponent 0 instead. 
because x to the exponent 0 is the same as 1, right? Any base, so even though we don't know what this x value is, we know that if we put it to the exponent 0, that it must be equal to 1. And that's simply based on this fact right here. So 6x to the exponent 0 is the same as 6, proving that, look, 6 is a term. It does have a number part and a somewhat invisible, strange sort of variable part. But hey, it's a term. So a collection of terms is called a polynomial. There are different names for polynomials depending on the number of terms. So polynomial is another important word that we're going to see. Uh, some synonyms are things like algebraic expression. That really says the same thing as polynomial. So um, specifically, uh, there are special names given to one-term polynomials, two-term polynomials, and three-term polynomials. Okay, so out of these three words right, oops, out of these three words right here, which one do you think is one term, a one-term polynomial? Well, if you know your prefix as well, you'll know that monomial has to be the word, mono meaning one. So I can see the prefix mono right there, okay, meaning that that's a one-term polynomial. Two terms. Well, bicycle, two wheels, binomial, two terms. And finally, then trinomial must be the one with three terms. And again, I like to think of tricycle, tri, triangle, hey, three. Okay, so three-term polynomial uh, is a trinomial. And we got three examples now here and here and here of these different kinds of uh, polynomials. So a monomial has one term. Well, which of these things here has one term in it? It's this one right here. 10w is an example of a term, and there's just one term that's there. Two terms. Well, 4d squared plus 9d is an example of a binomial. And finally, 2x squared minus 8x plus 5 is an example of a trinomial. So at this point, it's worth noting, well, how do you know when you have one term, two terms, or three terms? Have you noticed what's different? Whenever you've got an addition sign or a subtraction sign, that's like your signal that separates one term from the next. And so, just to uh, take that one little step further, in this binomial, there are two terms. There's 4d squared, which is like positive 4d squared, and positive 9d. Those are the two terms. In this trinomial, there are three terms, 2x squared, negative 8x, and positive 5. Now you may have just noticed that, hey, the sign that's in front of the term does in fact belong to that term. So these addition and subtraction signs are not only separators that separates one term from the other, but they are also, like they also belong to the term themselves. Okay, well that's it for today's note. I uh, hope you enjoyed.